Feedback and Disequilibrium in Human Overpopulation by Stephen B. Kurtz, Countercurrent. Variable, individual, social, and institutional factors are examined, and policy options are considered. Evidence is given debunking the claim that the rich attempt to coerce poor nations to reduce fertility. Carrying capacity and optimum population concepts are discussed, particularly as to equilibrium potential. Prospects for proactive success are entertained. Finally, I will venture into the realm of speculation to consider the prospects for success in the self-determination of equilibrium. Peace and the minimization of future suffering seem to be related to the ultimate outcome. As I have said there are several issues on which I would take issue with you philosophically and also with respect to your interpretation of what a system's view is. Stephen's paper is summarized for him in a monument known as the Georgia Guidestones. The inscribed summary is this. J. Kenneth Smail, professor of anthropology and sociology at Kenyon College in Ohio, has an argument for a sustainable optimum of approximately 2 billion by the beginning of the 23rd century. Laugh Smail, not the Smail, Stephen mistakenly said he had quoted, as Smail, in the subject paper to which I am making this response says this of the polarities of the two schools of thought on overpopulation. Udal's essay calls for the establishment of a direct-to-the-people non-profit organization financed by a consortium of billionaires. It would be census-based policy lead evidence-making of overpopulation and the settled seance of anthropogenic-slash-anthropocentric global warming. All the evidence Man has too long forgotten that the earth was given to him for usufruct alone, not for consumption, still less for profligate waste. George Perkins Marsh. Sight is a fact. Say hello to everybody.